Star Wars The Force Awakens. Definitely by far the most anticipated film in my mind, virtually ever. Being that this is the first time that we're seeing Star Wars on the big screen in over 10 years, I'm quite excited, and apparently so is most of the world. Now, of course, being that this film has been under the covers virtually and full of secrets, no one really understands what's going on, at least myself, because I tend to refrain myself from looking at any spoilers. Now, of course, we're getting many new characters, and of course we're seeing the return of previous characters from the original trilogy. But for me, Kylo Ren, the Darth Vader-esque character, a member of the Knights of Ren, is by far, I think, going to be one of the coolest villains in this series, other than Vader himself. But for me and many others, when it came to his lightsaber, it seemed very unique. One, because it is a cross-guard saber. We've never seen that in a theatrical Star Wars film before. It may be in the expanded universe, but I'm not quite sure. Now, many people who have done visual effects, a lightsaber was their first effect that they ever did, using basic masks within After Effects, or doing whatever they could to establish that type of effect. Now, the challenge was figuring out how to take the old way and make it into something new. And I think I found that way. Alright, so what we have here is my first test, which is a finished product, I feel. Uh, there's a lot of tweaking that I should have done. Uh, as you can see, I did not actually round out those uh, edges there, which is something that you need to do, but for the sake of this being somewhat quick, I'm not going to do that. But uh, overall, you can see the type of effect that I'm going for. If you're wanting to know where the video source actually came from, it's from Sith Lord 314, I believe his name is on YouTube, of his Kylo Ren costume that he was showing off. Um, I just downloaded it and used it as a reference because instead of doing my own, I decided why not actually have Kylo Ren in here. Now, uh, I I did cheat a little bit for this tutorial. Um, I'm at least using the thought that there's some knowledge in rotoscoping going on uh, with whoever was watching this video. If not, it's very simple. Uh, in a mask, let's start with the main blade. In a mask, you have uh, four points. Well, in this case, five. I don't remember why, but there's five points. Uh, what you can do is, so you can see, you can sh shut off the actual layer, but if you have your solid selected, then you are able to move the points every every frame or so. So, you know, if you want to round out the tips, you can do so. And you just you very roughly mask around, uh, depending on how precise you're wanting to be in the mask, but being that this uh, video is not the greatest quality, uh, it was a little difficult for me to be very precise, and being the fact that this was just a test initially. But uh, what you want to do is you want to go through the footage and mask the blades, so that way they essentially look like this. Now to get into the somewhat fun part. So I'm going to shut off those three layers. Um, I'm going to call this uh, main blade. I'm going to call this, um, I believe this is the one that's closest to the camera. Yes. So I'm going to call that lightsaber is facing up. I'm going to call that right underscore one because I got lazy and just uh, kind of cheated. Right underscore two, and then let's just name this left one left. So we're going to start off with the uh, main blade, getting the essential effect down. Now what you want to do is you want to take this layer, and you want to hit Control D or Apple D or Edit Duplicate, and you want to duplicate it three times. So one, two, three. 
So now you should have four of the main blade layers. Now with this we're going to go to, to layer, new, solid. You want to make it a black solid. Okay. Now you take that black solid and put it at below the first main blade so that way each of the blade layers are on top. Now what we're going to do is we're going to highlight all of these. You can hold down shift and go down. Make sure you click on the main, the very top one that you're wanting to copy. And then also click on the uh, black solid. Now what you want to do is right click and go to pre-compose or what you can do is uh, layer pre-compose. And let's just uh, call this main blade core. Now that we've made that a composition, what we can do is go into that composition. And here we go. Now what we want to do is essentially make the glow effect. Uh, most people what they do is they just go into the feather properties by clicking F on the keyboard with the selected layer and feathering out the layer. But I, I personally prefer using um, a fast blur. So that's what I'm going to show you here. You can do either or, just depends on your preference. I feel that the fast blur looks better in some instances and it does in this one. So what we're going to do is go to Effect, Blur and Sharpen, Fast Blur, and let's blur this out about uh, 20. Alright, so you can see overall what we're kind of getting here. So we've got that second one where it's, uh, it's blurred. Now we're going to go to the next one, go to Effect, Fast Blur, and let's make this one 50. Alright, so you see what we're getting. Uh, I'm actually going to bring down the blur of this first layer. I'm going to bring it down to 7.5. Bring this one down to 20. And the very last one, what we want to do is you really want to get that glow. So I'm going to go to 80 and we'll bring it down from there to about, let's just say 55. So this is what we essentially have. Uh, if we shut off all the layers except for the core, you know, that's what we have. We shut the core off, but turn on all the other layers. There we go. So now what we're going to do is we want to get that rippling effect that the color room blade is known for. Now in order to do this, what we're going to do, let's shut off all these layers. We're going to go to Effect, Distort, and then down to Turbulent Displace. Let's click that, and it's really going to mess things up, but we're going to add a second instance of Turbulent Displace and it still looks pretty janky. So, with that, what we're gonna do is we need to mess around with the amount and the size of both of them. So let's bring the amount down on this first instance and the size down to about, let's just say, let's do 18 and 18 for right now. And you can finesse this and get, get it how you want soon. Let's bring it down and bring the size way down on this one. All right. So then with that, we're going to bring the size down on this one as well. And bring up the amount. Let's bring up, bring down the amount on this one. Bring the size all the way down. Let's bring the size to about right. All right, so let's say about right there. All right, so you get where we're going, going for. Now, also, if you were to look in the trailer, at the very end, it seems like it kind of fades out. Now, to emulate that, what we're going to do is we're going to go to Effect. Well, first of all, make sure your layer is selected. Going to go to Effect, Blur and Sharpen, and go down to Radial Blur. Now, this is going to really mess things up at first, so we're going to hit the center point, bring the center point all the way down right here to the very point. Now you may be wondering, it's still looking a little messed up. So what we're going to do is we're going to go right here to type, go to the drop down menu and change it to zoom. And we're going to bring the amount right up, let's say to 45, that's a bit much. So let's bring it down to about 10. Okay, that's what it was at, 20. Okay, so, so we've got, 
Now we're going to turn this next layer on. And you know what? On the second blade, let's uh, let's just delete the fast blur. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go into the first layer. We're going to take all these effects by shift clicking and copy all of them. Go to the second blade and paste them. I'm going to shut off the radial blur for this second one. So that way we just have the turbulent displace effect. So now if we mess around with this, oh, that would be why it's not showing up. Got to make sure you have your, your effects selected. What we're going to do is we're going to, let's see what it looks like with that. Nope. We need to keep those very fine edges. So you just, you, you mess around with this as much as you need to. You want to keep the size relatively low just so that way it doesn't ripple out of control, even though technically it does. So this is virtually what we have now. All right, now, as you can see, none of the actual ripples are moving. So to fix that, I'm actually gonna bring the amount down a bit on both of these, just so that way it's not too insane. All right, bring it right up, bring this one down. Actually, let's just delete that whole second instance. All right, so now we get a little bit more of a feeling as to what we're going for. Let's bring the amount down again. All right, there we go. That's what we've got right now. So now to get the actual movement of the ripples, um, I'm going to switch these. I'm going to delete of the first one. I'm going to turn this one back on. I'm going to turn that right up to 40. Now to get the actual ripple effect, what we're going to do is, for instance, in the main blade, we're going to go to the very first frame. We're going to hit the stopwatch on both of the evolutions. And then go all the way to the last frame. Now with this, what we're going to do is we're going to just kind of spin this around to a random value and bring this up to about, let's say, 250. And let's do the same for this one, but let's uh, just so that way it has a little bit more randomness to it, let's bring it to 150. And we will do the same for the other instance on the blade number two. So spin that right around. Let's bring this one just to make it a little bit more sporadic to 450. So now if we go back into here, our actual video clip is not present because we need to change the actual mode. So we need to change this from normal to screen. So here we go. See basically what we're going for. All right. Now what we need to do is we need to get the red glow. Now to do that, I'm going to go to Effect, Color Correction, and then Curves. Now with this, I'm going to go to the red channel, bring the reds right up. I'm going to go to the green channel, bring the greens down, and the same thing with the blue channel, bring the blues down. And then I'm going to go to the RGB, turn this Turn this down a bit. I'm going to go back into the main blade comp. I'm going to duplicate this very last one so that way it makes a fifth blade. I'm going to feather that even more. And that's just to get a little bit more glow off of that. So now to review, what we are essentially getting is the main part of a Kylo Ren styled blade, a very unstable crystal. Now, of course, we have these little blades to deal with. And those you essentially do the exact same thing as you did the main blade. So let me just show you for this left one. So I'll turn that on. So we're going to once again duplicate. Let's do four, three times. One, two, three. I'm going to go to layer, new, solid. 
All right, new black solid. Bring it down to the very, underneath the very last one. Gonna shift click, right click, and go to pre-compose. And we'll call this left blade. All right, so we got a new composition. We're gonna go right in here. All right, we're gonna, we're gonna kind of, we're gonna just, we're gonna do the same thing. So I'm gonna leave those two alone with glow. We're gonna go to effect, blur and sharpen, fast blur. Move in here. Nope. And now just so that way. Uh, can see what we're doing. I'm going to turn the mask off. I'm going to bring that fast blur right up to about, let's see, 15. And let's copy this, paste it on the last blade. I'm going to blur that out even more. First blade, we're going to go to Effect, Distort, Turbulent Displace. Effect turbulent displace again. I'm going to turn those off, and we're going to do the exact same thing as we did previously. Uh, we're going to get it back into its relative spot. Bring the amount up on one and then down on the other, so that we we get that kind of very distorted portion. And we're going to copy this, put it onto the left two. Actually, what we could do is a deal with the evolution now. So we go to the first frame, hit the stopwatch, go to the final frame, and we're going to bring the evolution up 150. And for this one, we'll bring it to. 300. You want to kind of have a randomness to it, just so that way it looks exactly that, looks random. So now what we're going to do is we're going to copy both of these, paste them onto the second blade. All right. Now the second one, what we're going to do is that's where we're going to add the radial blur. So we go to Effect, Blur and Sharpen, Radial Blur once again. I'm going to go to the top point, change it to zoom, I'll bring that right up just so that way we get a real burn off of that. Now we don't want to go too much. This is the problem. See, most of the time you're going to have to actually sit here and keyframe your center point. So let's go a couple frames. See, it's going a little sporadic. All right, well, once you go through and you get all of that, you go to the main composition and you want to make sure to change it to screen once again. And uh, you should have now, if you turn back on your main blade, you should have both the main blade and the mini blade going at the same time. And now for the color, what you can do is just go to your main blade, control copy and paste the same coloring. And if you want to change things up, I want to blur it out a little bit more just to give it a bit more blur. So now, of course, you have that real rippling effect. Um, I'm going to add another instance of that. Bring this down a touch. Go back. All right. I'd say for right now that looks uh, that looks pretty decent. And now the final thing to do is for the core blade. If you notice in the teaser trailer, even there are little ripples of what appear to be lightning. Okay, and you can see them breaking up the blade there. So now what we can do is go to where the blade is being ignited. 
technically should be there, but uh, I guess I got that wrong. And we're going to go to onto the actual pre the um, pre-composed layer for the main blade. We're going to go over here to the effects and presets, and we're going to go lightning. And then we're going to grab the lightning tool, drag that right on top of here. Place the start point at the end of the hilt and the end point at the other end of the hilt. And then from here, really, you just need to finesse it. Uh, you need to turn the branching down to zero, the rebranching down to zero, and the branch segment length down to zero. All right, then you need to get the outside color to be that same red. So let's make this more of a pure red. And then you need to bring down the segments to about three and bring down the amplitude down to what I seem to like was one. One really worked for me in the detail level up to eight. All right, and then of course you wanna mess with the width, but you wanna do all that later. Now what we're going to do is we're going to keyframe this frame by frame to go along with the saber and you can cheat it. All right, after you keyframe it all the way through, you should have something that looks along the lines of this where you can really see the lightning sort of break out from the main blade. All right, well, I hope you found this tutorial helpful. Uh, if you didn't, uh, leave me any suggestions in the comments below. And if you want to see how any other effects are done, just let me know. All right. Thank you.